What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a SketchUp extension that allows you to use artificial intelligence in order to render images from your models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So make sure you stick around till the end of the video because I give some feedback on what I'm thinking about this tool, but also AI in general, and I'd love to have you join that conversation. This is a really interesting topic, and I'm excited to see what you have to say. So make sure you stick around at the end of the video for that. Let's go ahead and get started. So Arco AI is an extension for SketchUp that basically creates AI generated renderings. So basically what it does is it's going to take an image out of your model and it's going to create a rendering from that. Um, and it does it all without you having to set up your lighting or anything like that. Um, so note that this is a paid add-on. There's a free trial here, which I believe gets you like 30 free renders or something like that. Um, I'm not sure what the limitation is after that point. The paid version is going to be $25 a month for students or $39 a month for personal use. Um, note that that's going to give you higher resolution, unlimited renderings, um, some additional category options, other things like that. Um, so basically the way that this works is you take the add-on or you take the extension and you install it in SketchUp just like you would any other extension. Then you want to make sure that you go into the extension manager and you want to make sure that Arco AI is enabled. And so let's go ahead and let's open up a model. And this is an example model that's available on their forums and take a look at the way that it works. Okay. And so this is the exterior of a house model. And so what you can do is you can open up Arco AI. Okay. And so once this pops up, um, what this does is this gives you the ability to add different prompts in here. So first off, notice with the drop down right here, there's options for different disciplines. Now I'm not 100% sure how the disciplines are actually changing this. Like for example, I would probably put this under architecture, but I guess you could put it under construction. I'm not sure what that does to the overall result. But basically the way that this works is this allows you to select that, that discipline and then also gives you the ability to add different words or sentences. So for example, if I was to click on render right here, it's going to use the prompt nature and modern in order to generate a rendering from your current screenshot or your current image. And so one thing that's going to be really important is you can use the slider to set how different this can be from the original. So if I set this to 95% different, notice this is going to come through and it's going to generate a rendering that can be like wildly different than your original rendering. All right, so you can see how this comes through and it does make this very modern. Um, it takes a lot of liberties with it, where on the other hand, if we were to drag this more to the left, right, and keep our difference to like 10, it's gonna be a lot closer to the original image that you had in here. So depending on what you're using this for, um, it's going to adjust or it's going to change what that final render is gonna look like, right? Like right here, um, this barely looks different at all um, because I set it so that it needs to be very close. Um, so you can kind of play around with this a little bit in order to adjust um, where your renderings come from, how different they are from that original image. And so in addition to being able to adjust the difference from the original, you can also adjust how important the prompt is. So that's going to set how much the prompt is going to adjust what's created in here. So let's say that we said something more like farmhouse, traditional, rustic, and we clicked on render, what that's gonna do is that's going to give us a different rendering that more that is more driven by this other or this new prompt, right? And because we brought the prompt importance up, um, it's going to basically incorporate that into the rendering that's created. And so in this case, I might wanna give it a little bit more freedom. So what I might do is I might bring that difference up a little bit and it's going to use that image as kind of a base. <laughs> and so you can see that the more freedom you give it, the more wildly this can vary. So this is almost some kind of like 1800s fort or something with like a weird pile of dirt in here. So you just kind of have to play around with the sliders a little bit um, in order to get it to do what you want. Now note that it can, in addition to being able to do exterior renderings, it can also do interior rendering. So I'm gonna click on refresh original view right here. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and bring the prompt importance down a little bit. We're gonna bring the difference down a fair amount as well. And we're gonna render this, but this is gonna take this and it's going to render it out in that more like traditional or farmhouse style. And so you can get more detailed as well. So you could type in something like a modern house with new stainless appliances, white cabinets, and countertops. 
So you can get more detailed with your prompt and it's going to take that into account when it creates this rendered image. So you can see how this will give you a completely different result that more matches that prompt. And so one thing I wanna point out is your original image is what's gonna be important here in your result because basically what this is doing, if we click on this, is this is basically taking a screenshot of whatever's in the screen and then it's using the AI on that. So for example, um, and this is a 3D warehouse model that I downloaded, it's the Open Kitchen from Panda Kitchen and Bath. But for example, let's say that I was to run my rendering based on this image right here. So I'm just gonna click on render. I'm just gonna leave these on their defaults at the moment. What you're gonna get is you're gonna get an image that has basically brown cabinets. Whoops, you probably wanna run that on interior design when you render this. Um, notice how if we leave this on architecture, it actually creates these as if they were little buildings, which is interesting, but not what we're looking for. Okay, but it gives us this kitchen right now and you're gonna struggle, like let's say I wanted these cabinets to be white. Um, even if I was to type in white cabinets and turn my prompt up like this, and render it, it's gonna have a hard time figuring out what are cabinets and actually swapping out those materials, right? So when we finalize this render, notice how our cabinets are usually going to stay brown no matter what we type in there. However, say that we were to click on this button right here um, in order to get our original image, and I'm gonna go ahead and change this style real quick so that my back faces are the same as my front faces. So I'm just going to go into my back color. We'll set this to white right here. We'll notice how if I go back in here and I click on the refresh original view and now I type in a prompt and we're just gonna call this uh, modern kitchen. And so I'm gonna go ahead and give this more control or more difference from the original, but I'm gonna type in modern kitchen, light cabinets, dark counters and click on render. Well, now I'm gonna be able to get more of the result that we're looking for. So see how it comes in here and it is getting really crazy with the cabinet doors in here. Um, so that might be something that we wanna work on, but notice how now it's able to come in here and actually apply these materials. And so what we might do is we might type in something like farmhouse style kitchen and I'm gonna go ahead and bump this difference up. So uh, it's kind of a two-edged sword on that one. Like the more difference um, you give this in here, the more control it gets over what it can create, but the weirder your results can get. So um, it's kind of one of those, just kind of test it and see type situations. I think uh, what this is doing in here is pretty cool, but notice how it's coming in here and it's like repeating um, the it's coming in here and it's repeating the appliances and turning the refrigerator into doors. So you can just kind of get some of those wild results. Okay, so after using this tool for a little bit, I guess the question in my mind is, would I use a tool like this and is there value in it for me? Um, so the question is, you know, is taking something like this and getting a result where your cabinet doors are not where they're supposed to be and things like that, is there value in it? Um, and, you know, that's a little separate from the discussion on AI, which we can have in just a second. Second. To me, I think the answer is yes, only from a getting ideas standpoint and kind of seeing what a space might look like, right? Because you can switch between different styles and things like that based on a space that you kind of block out. Now, that being said, I'm not necessarily sure this is something I would turn to over going to like Pinterest and creating an idea board or something like that, um, or um, any other kind of reference style stuff that you might do. But I think that it's interesting and I think that there are some people that are gonna find a lot of value in it. I'm not gonna be using this in any of my day-to-day -day workflows, but I think it's a great example of what AI can do. Now, on AI itself, my personal opinion is I'm a little mixed on it. So it's coming whether you like it or not. Um, so uh, somebody online, I think it's Philip DeFranco usually says, just remember that today is the worst that it'll ever be, right? So this technology is gonna continue to grow and improve. And I think that it is something that's going to be incorporated um, into what we do from a day-to-day -day standpoint, but maybe not in the way that people think. So like, for example, what this is doing right here, it, it's, it, it's not necessarily giving me results that I can use. 
use, right? When I create a rendering of a space, I wanna actually be able to represent the space. And I don't really want it changing basic things like where the doors are, um, what the appliances are, things like that. I more wanted to automate the setup of lighting and shadows and that kind of thing. Um, so maybe something that does a little bit more of like a render style filter or something like that, instead of changing the whole image like this. That's just for me, that might be a little bit different for somebody else, but I need a little bit more control because I don't want to be fighting with, I don't want to be fighting with that, right? It needs to be something that's kind of complementing my workflow. Now, that being said, I do think that there are probably tools that are being developed right now that are going to allow you to do that. Now, are they going to replace people? I don't know the answer to that. I think from a concept standpoint and creating concept style things, I think it's a possibility. I also think in an automating processes standpoint, eventually there are going to be tools that make things a lot easier. But does it replace people? In my opinion, at least as it is right now, the answer is no, um, mostly because the information that AI seems to be using is kind of a conglomeration of everything. Um, everything I do with AI, whether it's ChatGPT, PT or this seems to be like an average of all of the information that it's sampled. And I think there's situations where that work and situations where that doesn't, you know, so to me, you still kind of need a person on the other end of that kind of filtering through all of that data. Now, could it get better? It definitely could. Um, but in my opinion, I'm not afraid of it as much as just kind of staying on top of it and trying to figure out how it can make me better. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this tool and also about artificial intelligence in general? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.